Seconds out, delighted to be joined by James Tennyson, former European super featherweight champion, of course, and now on something of a tear at lightweight, it's fair to say. How's yeah, everything yeah. going at the moment with everything that's going on? As good as can be, you know, I'm not doing too bad, you know. It's not really out of my routine when I'm in training camp, you know, doing my training and then I spend the rest of the day with my family and the rest in between. So, you know, that's sort of what I'm doing. I've got enough equipment at home that's kept me busy, you know. So the only thing I'm really missing is my sparring. So everything's going good so far. What about your trainer and the other lads in the gym? Are you guys kind of keeping in touch and are you missing that side of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's one thing, you know. You don't really realise how much you, you love your training and, and all the stuff that comes of it until you know it's taken away from you. So yeah, I've been kept, I've me and Tony have kept in touch. You know, we're talking away every day and letting each other know how things are going and stuff. So yeah. As we talk now on the first of May, you're still scheduled to fight for the vacant British lightweight title against Gavin Gwynn in July. What's the latest you're hearing about that, both in terms of if it goes ahead on that date and whether it will be behind closed doors, as we assume? Well, I was reading up with the British Boxing Board of Control, so I'm near sure that, well, they says as long as lockdown and stuff's lifted, the boxing can resume in July, which is when we're dating for. So I'm pretty sure that it could happen behind closed doors. You know, I've kept my head in the game, I've kept training, you know, I know that it is close enough. So, you know, I've kept, I've kept things going and, you know, Hopefully it does happen in June. You could be one of the first boxers to in the UK at least to appear back on after the lockdown. Yeah, one of the first. Yeah, brilliant happy days. <laughs> what oh, do you, what do you make of um, Gavin Gwynn as an opponent? Um, he's a big tough lad. You know, he works hard. He comes to win. You know, he's got a big heart. You know, I think. Yeah, let not be an easy fight. You know, he's 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 coming to win. You know, he's eager. He's busting to win this where he's telling. You know, it's a goal of his and. Um, yeah, I'm expecting a tough night, you know, if, if, if Captain Training and stuff going on, like I say, you know, I know what's ahead I know what's ahead of me. Give us an idea because you've um obviously beaten Martin J. Ward, you've challenged for a world title against Tevin Farmer, you're still rated, I think, top ten um by the uh, WBO, number eleven by the WBA at lightweight. Why are you fighting for the British title? Because it doesn't seem like you need to necessarily. Yeah, I don't really. Yeah, you're right. I don't really. I don't think I need to, but you know, it's just the way we're, we're coming to lightweight. We didn't have no belts, you know, after taking a loss, having farmer stuff. So, you know, it's a good way of building ourselves back up, picking some tails up along the way. And, you know, we're still learning every day. So, you know, it's, it's we're, we're still gaining experience from from uh, fighting for this tail and working our way back up, back up the ladder. Does the British title kind of, and the Lonsdale belt and the, the history behind it, does that mean something to you? Because I know against uh, Martin Ward, he gave up the belt not long before you guys fought, so you never got the opportunity to challenge for it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I challenged for the belt around four years ago against... Um, Brian Walsh. Brian Walsh, yes, and, you know, fell up short. So it's, it's, it's a title that I haven't got to add to my, to my collection of belts, you know, and it's one that I, I wouldn't mind adding, you know, it's very highly recognised title, you know, and, yeah, I wouldn't mind uh, getting a win here and adding that belt before I move on to bigger and better things. You've won, I think, four in a row since moving up to lightweight. What's the big kind of differences between you at 135 compared to Super Feather and, and Feather previous to that? Massive difference. You know, when I was doing Super Feather with the throughout training camp and throughout sparring, you know, everything was going great. But then once it came to cutting them, Cutting the last load of pounds off, you know, it was affecting me massively. You know, I went out to I went out to America a bit early for the Tavern Farmer fed and I think I spent near enough every day training with a sweatsuit on. Just you were more or less eating and drinking slightly, and then you were training with a sweatsuit just to make sure that you were able to have a gain and so on and so forth. You know, it was just it took its effect on me. So you know, moving up, I'm doing the weight comfortably. You know, it's it's crazy what a couple of pounds the difference that a couple of pounds can make the to your performance and how you feel, so you're there, the move up's doing me real good, you know, I'm, I'm doing the weight comfortably, I'm doing the weight a lot more comfortably than what I was doing super featherweight, and yeah, it's, it's, it's the, the move's been good, you know, it's shown. It seems like you've carried your power up with you as well, I think you're probably recognised now as one of the biggest pound-for-pound punchers in, in U, uh, UK boxing, if you like. Just give us an idea of where that comes from, is it completely natural, do you work on it, where does it go, where does it come from? I think it comes natural, you know, I've never really worked on par, you know, 
I actually hadn't really done a, an awful lot of strength and conditioning up until a few camps ago. You know, I started working with um, I started working with Michael Lands, and you know, things really started to fall into place. And, you know, I think the strength and conditioning that I'm doing now it can only you know can only make me that more a bit stronger, and you know, it can uh, up my punch power as well. So, yeah. You talked about um getting past Gavin Gwynn, hopefully, and then moving on to bigger and better things. What does that represent to you? Obviously, I'm sure you want another world title shot, but who do you see as the big fights at lightweight? It's a hugely competitive division. The, the lightweight division, yeah, like you say, it's a hugely competitive division. You know, there's a lot of big names out there. Not one that goes and calls fighters out, but we get my, get my birdies tail shot out of the way, and, you know, I'm hoping to push on for a world tail, you know, of, of, of big dreams and ambitions, like every other boxer become world champion but I believe that I can I believe that lightweight you know I can I can push on and I can win a world header There's been speculation that after the rearranged Teofimo Lopez fight Lomachenko win or lose will probably move back down in weight um, to, to seek other fights or other belts what do you who do you perceive as kind of the number one outside of him? The number one at them you know all the all the title holders at the minute you know I'd say they're very Closely matched. You've got Javante Davis. You've um, you've Teofimo Lopez. You've got um, what do you call that guy? Uh, his name will come to me. But you know, I believe they're all they're all kind of closely matched, and you know, I believe that I can I can mix it up with them at, with how I'm going at the minute. And you've been fighting on matchroom shows recently, of course. So you have got the likes of Devin Haney, Luke Campbell as well, both competing at lightweight, who potentially could be big fights for you, even over here. Yeah, absolutely, you know, definitely. Um, you know, Devin Haney, it's him and um Luke Campbell, I think they've been having a bit of back and forth. So they're a possible fight for for down the lane, you know. I'd be happy to take the winner, not, not a problem, you know, but like I say, I need to get my British Hill fight out of the way, get the win and then that's the sort of fight that I can push on for. Brilliant. Well, it's been really good to, to catch up with you. And um I hope it all goes ahead as planned. I look forward to watching it. Brilliant, thank you very much. All right, and uh, yeah, stay safe. Yeah, thank you. You too, man. Cheers. Take care, mate. I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Bye.